Well, coming up on today's show, the new Kia Soul EV to be revealed in LA next month. Volkswagen's group in China building its first factory specifically for the electric platform. And the Audi e-tron, <clears throat> this is awkward, it's delayed. Well, thank you very much for listening today. Good morning, good afternoon and good evening wherever you are in the world. Here's your EV News Daily for Monday the 22nd of October 2018. My name is Martin Lee and I've been through every EV story I could find over the last 24 hours so that you don't have to. Thank you to myev.com for helping make this show. They've built the world's first marketplace specifically for EVs. That's right. Buying and selling a car at the best of times can be a stress, but not if you're using uh, myev.com. Also, if you're in North America, learn it to uh, use it to learn and research about EVs as well. The buying and selling process literally could not be easier. Check it out. Let's start with some big news about something that could be coming in the future. I know this is a little bit of vaporware, but let's go with it, right? Because I love stories like this. Researchers at the Department of Energy's Oak Ridge National Laboratory have demonstrated a 120 kilowatt wowzers wireless charging system. You don't think I was going to say wireless there, did you? Providing six times the power of the previous ORNL technology. It's a big step towards charging times that rival the speed and convenience of a gas station fill up. Well, tell me about it. 120 kilowatts on a cable is brilliant. Well, the wireless system transfers 120 kilowatts of power with 97% efficiency. And that's the thing that people always say about these wireless systems. Like, ah, oh, it's not as good as plugging in. Well, 97% will do me very nicely, thank you very much. Comparable easily to conventional wired high-power fast chargers, even better in some cases. In the demonstration, power was transferred over a 6-inch air gap between two magnetic coils, and they charged a battery pack. So I should say, this isn't in a car just yet. No, you can't buy the system. No, no one's even packaged it to be going inside a car. But I love it when you can make a big breakthrough like this. Uh, they also created and demonstrated the world's first 20 kilowatt wi wireless charging uh, system uh, that's kind of being modified right now for commercial delivery trucks. So to achieve that 120 kilowatts, the team created a new coil design, co-optimized, they say, with the latest silicon carbide power electronic devices for a lightweight and compact system the system's architecture takes energy from the grid, converts it to a high-frequency AC alternating current, then it generates a magnetic field that transfers power across the air gap, and quite large, six inches. Once the energy is transferred to the secondary coil, it's then converted back to DC, direct current, and stored in the battery. I'll put a full link in the show notes to that press release. Let's talk about something that is concrete. Well, metal and lithium-ion and cars. We've seen spy photos of the next-gen Kia Soul EV a couple of times in the last month, and it's only natural that that means a debut is imminent, reports the wonderfully named Anthony Carr. Yes, he writes for Motor1.com, which is fast becoming my favourite place to find out my car news. Uh, our friends from the Korean Cars blog uh, report the standard ice-powered and fully electric versions of the Seoul are going to make their official premieres at the LA Auto Show in the second half of November very, very soon. Nothing confirmed from Kia. It's believed the sales in the US are going to kick off in the second quarter of 2019, sometime from April onwards. As far as the Seoul EV is concerned, we've seen those spy shots. It's Got that this distinctive soul shape, but it's going to be using the powertrain of the Nero EV. Now, Motor One says this it means two battery packs will be on sale the 34 and the 60 kilowatt hour, which is interesting because neither of those match the, the E Nero. Uh, e Nero 39.2 and 64 kilowatt hour. I wonder if that's what they meant, or maybe that is they're quoting usable, and I'm not anyway. So they reckon the Soul EV with two battery packs. I don't know, I've, I've read that nowhere else, but they really know what they're talking about. However, can you imagine a 60 kilowatt hour battery in a car? So in the, in the Kia e-Nero slash Nero EV, it's called different things around the world, I'm learning. Uh, in, in a big SUV, fine, right? 300 miles, boom. In a Soul EV, that is going to give you some stellar performance and stellar range. And I must say, I just don't think that they would put a 60 kilowatt hour battery in the Soul EV, but I would bloomin' love it if they did. The range of the Hyundai Kona and the Soul, the Kia e Nero slash Nero EV, 300 odd miles. It would easily do another 20 to 30 in a Soul. That's 500 kilometers. Wow. 
Oh, I hope it happens. I'm not sure it will. I think they'll go for the smaller battery pack. Please prove me wrong. Please prove me wrong, Kia. Well, Volkswagen Group in China is beginning construction in Anting of the group's first factory designed for the MEB platform. It's the Modular Electric Drive Kit. Uh, MEB is the German an acronym, if you know what I mean. Although it's not MEDK, Modular Ele- Electric Drive Kit. MEB is anyway. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, the first model will be produced in the factory of SAIC Volkswagen. It's going to be an electric Volkswagen brand SUV, according to Green Car Congress. It comes in 2020, uh, together with the FAW Volkswagen factory in Foshan that opened earlier in the summer. SAIC Volkswagen is going to begin producing their e-cars for the MEB platform directly after. The first MEB cars are rolling off the line in Germany. So China won't beat Germany to having the MEB platform cars. Well, Dr. Herbert Dies is chairman of the board of management at Volkswagen Group. And he said this, and I quote, Through Volkswagen's MEB platform, we will be able to easily produce state-of-the-art EVs for our Chinese customers on a high scale. The Volkswagen Group, its brands and their Chinese joint venture partners focus consistently on sustainable mobility and push the transformation of the automotive industry in China and worldwide. In this way, we emphasize the importance of the Chinese market to the Volkswagen Group, end quote. And the key phrase in there, I mean, I'm not not correcting the chairman of VW, but I think the key phrase in there is scale. VW can't be doing what they've done with the e-Golf and until recently the Golf GTE and the Passat GTE. Good luck getting hold of one of those in Europe because of new emissions regulations that haven't been too kind to hybrids, uh, even plug-in hybrids. Uh, However, even pure electrics like the e-Golf, uh, they haven't been made at scale. They have been handmade. They've been lovingly handmade to high VW standards. And the latest one with the bigger battery has actually been a really good car. But they've just not made many of them. If you want a serious future on the MEB platform and, and your VW, you just can't have any more headlines saying they're not mass-producing cars. If they're going to kick off demand for this, they've got to have the supply. Well, the facility in China is scheduled to go into production in 2020, and the planned annual capacity is, and this is a relief to my ears, 300,000 vehicles a year. It's going to produce various new pure electric vehicles for SAIC Volkswagen, including medium and large pure electric SUVs, and it'll produce the battery systems there as well. The factory is going to be supporting the VW Group's e-mobility strategy in China. The vehicles being produced in Anting are based on MEB, which is their first pure electric modular platform it's not a hybrid it's not a um not hybrid as in you know hybrid cars but it's not like a frankenstein platform where some of them are ice some of them are fossils some of them are batteries it's pure all of the meb platform is only for pure electric cars it's just their way of doing it other automakers have a different way of doing it well here in the uk transport scotland says it's established a seven hundred thousand pound investment to help people switch to ultra low emission vehicles saying the plug-in household scheme will allow housing associations to apply for funding for car clubs. As per a story by Smart Highways, the fund's going to be administered by the Energy Saving Trust and help to improve access to ULEVs, uh, ultra-low emission vehicles, and allow more households to consider the scheme as an alternative option to owning an EV. I'll put a full link in the show notes. The Audi e-tron GT four-door electric sports car is due in 2020, and it's going to have a similar range to the new Audi e-tron SUV, but it's going to be focused towards power, according to the firm's powertrain boss. And Autocar have all the details on this one. The e-tron SUV, that's the big one that we've all been talking about lately. 248-mile range on the new WLTP test cycle. The new GT car is going to have a similar range, but it's it's going to be steered towards performance. In the most powerful boost mode, the e-tron has a claimed 0-60 of 5.5 seconds, top speed of 124. By comparison, if you jump in a Tesla Model S P100D, you'll be doing 0-60 in 2.7, and you'll be hitting a top speed of 155. It's understood that Audi is going to endeavour to make the e-tron GT beat those figures. They just need a halo car. The e-tron GT is going to be previewed in concept form at the LA Motor Show in November, and it's going to be built on the same J1 platform as the Porsche Taycan EV that will be launched next year. And why wouldn't you? If you have that platform there, and dare I say it, the parts bin, I didn't say that, did I? That's a bit insulting. You might as well use your sister company's technology. But let's talk about Porsche. 
because they're making an off-road wagon version of its Taycan EV, the Mission E Cross Turismo. We've talked about that on the podcast before. One of the first variants of what Porsche promises is a family of EVs. According to driving.ca, Porsche has confirmed now that the lifted and wagon-bodied version of the Taycan EV is going to be put into production alongside the sedan, the first variant in a family of EVs based on the Mission E concept. Sadly, that Mission E name has long been consigned to history. I think that's such a cool name, though. The car is going to resemble the Mission E Cross Turismo. That was a concept revealed earlier this year. Blimey, time flies. Uh, Which looked almost exactly like the Mission E, but now called the Taycan. But it had a few inches of lift, a bit of body cladding, and a wagon-esque rear hatch. Because if you're heading away for the weekend, you need somewhere to store your skis. The announcement is going that it's going into production follows the recent capture of spy shots of a similar-looking but actually lowered vehicle undergoing testing. So some confusion about what that vehicle could be. Most magazines agree it's the Sport Turismo wagonized version of the Taycan, but just lowered. I'll put a full link in the show notes. And staying with our German manufacturers, Reuters say that Audi's first electric sports utility vehicle is hitting the showrooms later than planned. The Audi e-tron Quattro SUV is facing a four-week delay because of a software development issue, a spokesman for Audi said today. The spokesman said that Audi's e-tron SUV faced a delay because the car, makers, uh, need, the car maker needs a regulatory clearance for a particular piece of software that was modified during the development process. The e-tron delays were first reported by a German newspaper, Bild am Sonntag, citing sources close to the company, so we do believe that. Uh, The paper said that delivery could be delayed actually by several months. The paper also said that Audi was locked in price negotiations with LG Chem, that's the South Korean supplier of batteries for EVs, which wants to increase prices by 10% because of high demand. And again, if you were LG Chem... Why wouldn't you? You've got the product everyone needs. Uh, They supply their EV batteries to Audi and its parents, Volkswagen and Daimler. I'll put a link to that Reuters article in the show notes for you. Thank you to everybody who answered our question of the week last week over the weekend. If you haven't picked up Sunday's edition yet, I would encourage you to download that episode to hear all of the results of question of the week. And here's a brand new question. Thanks to myev.com. Here we go. Putting range aside, because look, let's face it, everyone wants more range. Putting range aside, what do you feel is lacking in today's EVs? Is it a sense of design, options, a choice of models, a lack of education? Is it cost or even social pressure that there aren't enough around? You don't want to be the first person in your street to get one. Uh, We would love to know what's really stopping you from switching, and if you have switched, what's stopping other people? Hello to some new Patreon supporters. Oh, you wait ages for a new one. It's been a couple of days, and then three show up at once. Well, first of all, a new partner of the podcast. He's our fourth partner of the podcast, Paul O'Connor. Paul, thank you so much for supporting the work that I'm doing here and trying really hard to bring the good news of EV and sustainable transport to the rest of the world. Paul O'Connor, a new partner of the podcast. Looking forward to working with you, my friend. Thank you so much. And two new executive producers, Luke Cully. Hello to Luke and Renee Schneider, uh, who is an executive producer and I think our first Swiss producer as well. We like to tick the Swiss box. Luke and Renee, thank you so much. That means there's now 106 patrons of the podcast. Could you be 107? I'd love you to check out patreon.com slash evnewsdaily if you like the podcast. Uh, If you want to check out the previous ones, 272 free episodes online from the place you get podcasts from. The blog is evnewsdaily.com. The socials you'll find if you search for that. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow.